All right, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about matrices. Now, last time we talked about nested loops, and today we're going to be talking about matrix. And you'll realize why that's the case soon. So first, let's talk about what a matrix is. So here we have two things. We have one vector, which looks like a, it actually looks like an array, right? Because a vector is basically just a bunch of numbers stuck together. You know, a 2D vector would be a vector with two entries, two elements, because a vector has a X or Y coordinates, that would be a 2D vector. And then technically a vector can have multiple dimensions. Here, it's a four dimensional vector. And then now here we have a matrix. And then a matrix is basically a rectangular array. Like in mathematics, a matrix is a rectangular array. So for example, here, it's a three by three matrix. And then we could give another example. If we had a matrix that looked like this, maybe 20, five, minus six. So here, the size is three. And then here, the size is two. So two rows and three columns. So that means it's a two by three. All right, so that's what a matrix is. So last time I talked about how in Python, we can get creative or just in programming in general, we can get creative and, and represent certain things in a different way such that we can program with it. Kind of the same concept as last time where we put loops inside of loops, but this time we put lists inside of lists. So how can we represent a matrix using list of lists? So here we go. Here's a matrix. Imagine if I had a variable called my matrix. How would I represent this in terms of the data we already know? So one way we can do it is instead, imagine we have each row is its own list. So maybe it looks like this, comma, comma, right? So technically what this looks like is row one equals one, two, three, row two equals to two, five, six, row three equals to a list with seven, eight, nine. And then my matrix, technically I could erase all of this. My matrix is basically an array of these subarrays. So R1, R2, R3, because you could put anything in here. Right, you could put numbers, you could put booleans, you could put strings, and here I decided to put more lists. So there you go, that's how you represent a matrix in Python. So let's do it with code. We will whip out our REPL, and then here we have matrix, which is an empty array. Now what we did so far was we defined R1 as one, two, three, R2 as four, five, six, R3 as seven, eight, nine, and then matrix is R1, R2, R3, right? So your matrix actually looks exactly like that. It's actually a pretty good representation because the first row is one, two, three, second row, and then third row. All right, let's run this for now. What does matrix look like? Uh, as you can see, it's a list of a list. So see the outer brackets? That is the start and end of your macro list, your big list. And then within your list, you have three smaller lists, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, right? Another way we can represent it is literally just hard coded like this, right? It's just a little bit faster, it's cleaner. So here it's easy to see because you could see that you have three rows and then three columns. So one, two, three, three rows, AKA three sub lists, three smaller lists. And then you have for each list you have three elements. Actually, let me just show you the matrix again. You could see the same thing. Technically, you can do this because the program doesn't know it's a matrix, right? So you can define it like this, where the second row only has two numbers, but that would defeat the purpose of a matrix. A matrix can't, a matrix has to have um, this set number of rows and set number of columns. And then here you have something janky, but that is because Python doesn't know it's a matrix. Uh, we just decided to use lists of lists to represent a matrix. So let's fix this. All right, cool. So great, now that we have a matrix, how do we access the elements in it? 
Well, let's see, how do we access these numbers in a matrix? If I would just tell you to point to a number, like with, with your words, then you're gonna maybe say second row, second column, and then that would be five. Or you would say third row, first column, and then that's a seven. So it's gonna be the same thing in Python. Let me show you the grid. So instead in Python, we start counting at zero, right? So imagine you saw this, right? And then here's the grid just so that you could see better. But then what if I want the element six? Let's say this is a matrix. If I want the element six here, then it would be M. Let's say M is equals to this whole matrix. Then M would be the second row, which is one because we start counting at zero. And then one, two, three, third column, so two. So this is equal to six. So what if I want eight? One, two, three, third row. So that means second index. One, two, second column, one equals eight. Let's see if that works. Let's go back to our code. One, two. Ah, excellent. That works perfectly. Then we'll do the other one. Two, one. Matrix two, one should be eight. Okay, excellent. So what exactly are you doing? Well, the first index, you're getting the first list. You're getting your row, right? So here you go. You got the third row. This is literally just a list. And then within the third row, you want the first element, which would be eight. Well, it's the second element, but the index one, and then you got eight. So it's the same thing as saying the row three equals matrix. So then R3 is literally just a normal list. And then if you take one, you get eight, zero, you get seven, because R3 is just a simple list. So there you go, that's how you use matrices in Python. All right, so let's have some fun with it, shall we? So I want to go through the whole matrix and just print all the values in there. How would I do that? So because if it's a list of lists, what if we use a loops of loops? So we, we can use nested loops to print all of these values. So first, what I want to do is get the number of rows. How do I get that? I simply do the length of the matrix because the length of a matrix is basically a list of lists. And how many lists do I have in there? I have three, which is a number of rows. And then the number of column calls is length of the first row, the length of the first row. So how many columns are there here? There's three, right? But you have to be careful because this wouldn't work if the matrix is empty. So if matrix equals empty, then we're just gonna return because it's an empty matrix. Here's what I mean. If M equals that, then if you do M, if you try to grab a value in an empty list, it's gonna error out, right? So that's why you need this special case, just in case. So we're gonna change our matrix a little bit uh, the reason why is because I want the number of rows to be different than the number of columns, just so that it's easier to understand. I'm gonna add a three here, I'm gonna add a six here, I'm gonna add a nine here, and I run it. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna print the number of rows and also print the number of columns, just so that it's a bit easier to understand. All right, so print matrix. matrix. Oops. Yeah. So we have three rows and four columns. Basically, it works. So now I want to print them. Print them one by one. First, what we can do is we can loop over the rows. So how do we do that? We can do this for row in M. All right. And then for each row, what I want to do is for each value within the row for value or like number, whatever you want for num in row and then print the number. All right, let's, let's see if that works. Print matrix matrix. There you go. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Let me just change the number so that's easier. Okay, so now I've changed the matrix just so that's easy on the eye so that it's uh, monotonically increasing. All right, so this works. So essentially what we're doing is uh, for the first iteration, we are looking at this row. And then within that iteration, we will loop through the whole um, array or list to see one, two, three, four, and then we just print it. Okay, so that works. 
But what if I want to print it in this format, right? I want to print it nice. I'm going to change the matrix a little bit. I'm going to change it to something smaller. Well, we know that there's, for example, this is a three by two matrix. Then we're going to be printing three lines. And then each line, there's going to be two numbers. Okay, so how do we do that? Almost the same thing, but instead of printing every number, what you want to do is you want to add the numbers within the same row together as a string and then print it when you're done the iteration of your inner loop. So how you can do that is you first define the string you want to print line to print. And let's say that's empty. And then for each number, what you want to do is you want to add it to the line you want to print string num and then maybe add a space in between. And then after you finish this loop, then you print the whole line to print. Okay, and then that's pretty much it. And then I guess if it's empty, you could you could print um, uh, empty matrix. All right, let's see if that works. Print matrix uh, matrix. Yep, there we go. It prints it all nice. Cool, cool, cool. Let's try to add a few more values. Let's say eight, three, six. Print matrix, matrix. Cool, there you have it. So that is how you print a matrix. And that is how you use nested loops to iterate over a matrix. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.